If you're seeing your CPCs inside of Google Ads increase week after week, which means that you're paying more for every click, so you're getting less sales and conversions for your business, here are four practical things that you can do inside of your Google Ads account to help lower the CPCs that you're currently paying. The first thing you can do is to improve your quality scores. The way that you increase your quality scores is you focus on your keyword quality score, your ad relevance, and also look to increase your click-through ratios. Now, the one thing that I do wanna stress here is that if you increase increase all of those metrics and all of those scores, it doesn't automatically mean that you will get lower CPCs. It's a really, really important point that I just wanna let you know that with improving your quality scores, all you're doing is you're putting downward pressure on your CPCs. And the way that you're doing that is by increasing your ad rank. But it's really, really important to note that with Google Ads being a live auction, you could have better quality scores than what you had three months ago, but you could still be paying more on your CPCs. And this could be for a whole various amount of reasons, like you've got new competitors in the market. So if there's more money being spent on your terms that you're targeting, obviously that's gonna drive up the price. Or if a lot more businesses are using things like smart bidding, which has happened more and more with people moving over to campaign types like Performance Max, which have inbuilt smart bidding, which means that you've got multiple businesses who are targeting for higher conversions, which is also driving up the prices. So when it comes to increasing your quality score, it is really, really important to note that once you get your, say for example, your keyword quality score, if your keyword quality score, which is a score which is ranked out of 10, if that's a two or a three, you are definitely gonna be paying more for your CPCs. Now, once you get that above a five or a six, if you get it from a five or a six to a seven or eight or a nine or a 10, there's not gonna be that much difference in your CPC. Also as well with your ad rank, if you get that to above average or to exceptional, once again, it's not gonna make the vast amount of difference in your CPCs. So as a baseline for keeping your CPCs as low as possible, you do wanna make sure that you follow this simple rule with inside of Google Ads in that making sure that your ad copies are relevant to the user's initial search and that then your landing page is not only relevant to your ad copy, but also relevant to the user's initial search. And nowadays inside of Google Ads, I find a lot of that is actually not the problem with CPCs. Most people have pretty good quality score when it comes to their keywords and when it comes to their ad quality. But you do also wanna go through and just check to make sure you don't have any issues with your landing page score. If you've got a slow loading website or a website which Google deems to be a bad user experience, they are things which can actually really, really drive up your CPC. But just remember with working on your quality score that you're only gonna be putting downward pressure on your CPCs and it's not gonna be solving that full problem. Now, if you're unsure on any of those tasks that you need to do in order to get higher quality scores, I want you to go through and follow that link in the description below because you can get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. And this will take you through all of those optimization items that you can complete to increase your keyword quality scores and also increase your ad relevance scores. And it also goes into all of the different optimizations that you can complete, not only for search campaigns, but also for shopping, performance max, display, video, and even demand gen. And you can get all of that just by following the link in the description below. So the first thing you can focus on is those quality scores. The second thing I want you to focus on is to test broad match keywords. If you are currently running only exact match inside of your account, you could be getting cheaper CPCs just by adding in some broad match keywords into your your ad groups. Now I do need to quantify this is that this is a really, really a strategy which really depends on you and your business. For some businesses, a broad match strategy just may not be relevant, but it is important to note that if you do have some working exact match keywords inside of an individual Google Ads ad group, remember that one of the targeting signals that broad match keywords now use is other keywords inside of your individual ad group. So if you are gonna go down the pathway of doing some tests around broad match keywords, you first need to make sure that it is gonna be suitable for your business, but then you also need to take a step back and look at the data. And what I mean by that is that, yes, you wanna get lower CPCs, but at the same time, you need to be watching your conversion metrics. And you really wanna get that balance between getting the right amount of reach for your business, but also making sure that your conversion metrics are profitable for your business. But so that I can show you some real data, let's jump inside our Google Ads account so I can walk you through how to really get this balance right. All right, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at an ad group for a search campaign where we've got some broad match and exact match keywords. I've had to block out the full keyword, but this is looking at keywords which you're targeting, which have 
a word in it called licensing. And this is for a business that runs different licensing and accreditation. And we're also looking at data from January the 1st up until the 26th of October this year. So we're looking at nearly 11 months of data. So we've got a lot of data in here. What I wanna show you, these two highlighted keywords are our broad match, and then this unhighlighted keyword is our exact match. So what you can see from here is that obviously the broad match is getting a lot more rich. Now this is for two reasons. Obviously for the exact match, they have to type in that exact keyword or pretty close to it because the broad match keywords are in this have the same meaning. So by default, anything that goes beyond that exact match keyword, it'll go up into the broad match. Now I do know that exact match targets the meaning of the keywords, but when you do have it inside of a ad group, which also has broad match, it will favor broad match and it pretty much only triggers exact match if someone has targeted that exact keyword. So it kind of functions like exact match used to. But what I want to show you in through here is that you can see that there is a big difference in your CPC. So, you know, the exact match is running at over $11 a click, whereas the broad match is running at $6.50. So it's it's quite significant in the difference in cost, but then it comes over into your conversion metrics. So obviously up here, your broad match still converting really, really well, you know, 11% and 12%. And whereas the exact match is at 23, when we look at the cost per conversion, broad match is at 55 and 52. For this business, it just needs to be under 70. So they are performing really, really well. Whereas for the exact match, it is a little bit better at 48. And this is where I see some businesses get tripped up. They just purely get driven on this CPC. And this is where you want to get that balance right. Like obviously for us, the exact match keywords are performing better when it looks at the conversion metrics, but obviously the volume is going to be a lot lower, you know, over this whole year, it's not getting as much coverage. And if we were to only run exact match inside of this ad group, we wouldn't get the volume that this business needs. That's why I just really, really want you to think about this. When you're looking at your CPC, don't just look at the CPC, also look at the conversion metrics so that you can get that balance. Right. With the broad match, yes, we are getting a much lower CPC, but in this case it works because the conversion metrics, while they're not as good as the exact match, it does give us that really good balance of we're still under what this client needs of a $70 cost per conversion and we're getting extra volume and lower price traffic. So that's the first thing to consider looking at broad match and how that works for your business because you will see lower CPCs. The third strategy that you can use to lower your CPCs is to target problem or solution based keywords. And and what I mean by this is that rather than just targeting the high buyer intent keywords that are really, really looking for your product or your service, target keywords which are like higher up the funnel, top of the funnel keywords, which are really looking at researching the problem or the solution that your product or service provides. Now the payoff here is that yes, you can get cheaper traffic, but because the user who is searching this is usually earlier in the buying cycle, the time for conversion can be quite a bit longer. So it's for that reason that if you are gonna outlay this strategy, I recommend putting it inside of a separate campaign. That way you can control the budget and the bidding to a greater extent, because as I said, remember, you're gonna be getting cheaper traffic, but it could take longer for the conversions to actually occur. And a real example where we did this was for a business who was selling acne treatment creams. And one of their products was a cleansing facial wash. And because that was a product which was people were buying with real high buying intent, the cost per click there was $7.19. Whereas when we were targeting keywords like best skincare routine for oily skin, the CPC dropped to $3. So we got a massive $4 reduction in the CPCs just by targeting some keyword turns which were earlier in the buying cycle. So what the strategy is there is that if you see a whole heap of traffic around, you know, that real high intent bottom of the funnel, look to see if you can introduce some keywords and some keyword searches around people who are trying to find the different solutions that your products offer. And now we come to the fourth practical thing that you can do inside of your Google Ads campaign in order to lower your CPCs. And this is to diversify the types of campaigns that you are using. So for most businesses, you'll definitely start with search and search and shopping if you're an e-commerce brand. And you'll also very early in the piece have some performance max in there. But even if you've got those two or three different types of campaigns running, you can sometimes really, really quickly see that your CPCs are getting too expensive or you're hitting what I call CPC resistance. And that's when you look to increase your budgets, your CPCs go up more than your budget increase. So you might increase your budget by 10%, but your CPCs go up by 20% or 25%. Or another real example of this is that, you know, when you look at larger data, 
data amount of time where you might go, hey, look, this September, we were paying on average $4 a click, but when we were looking at the same time last year, it was like $1.50 or $2 a click. And if that's the case, and you're only running search, shopping, and performance max campaigns, the next step is that you could add in some different types of campaigns that are gonna be targeting two core cool things. One, you're gonna be targeting people on different networks. So the best way of doing that is by you know adding in some YouTube campaigns, and you could do this through either demand gen, or you could do this just through straight video campaigns, or you could look to target some more discovery type ads. And once again, you could do that through demand gen, where it's targeting ads on the discovery network and the display network. With both of those options, you are gonna get cheaper traffic, but once again, it becomes that payoff is that it can sometimes take a lot longer before you start to see the results of those newer types of campaigns. So what it's really, really key here is you wanna make sure you get that balance right. And especially if you are new to this whole world of video advertising or demand gen, I wouldn't be staking my claim at any more than sort of five to 10% on what you're spending on your current search campaigns. Run some real levels of testing. And then when you do review the performance, you wanna make sure that you're not just looking at an individual campaign line, but that you are looking at a total account performance. Because there's been quite often times when we've added in video campaigns or demand gen campaigns where that individual campaign may be recording a loss or break even, but when we look at the total account data, we can see greater performance, especially around their CPCs. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about demand gen, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. And once again, if you wanna know how to strategically optimize your Google Ads campaigns, make sure you follow that link in the description below. My name's Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. I look forward to seeing you in this video right now. See ya.